It was a dark night when the dame walked into my workplace. Well, actually, it was early in the morning. She walked right into my office, managing to dodge all sources of light. And in that same mysterious way, she mentions she's running out of time. She, all of her friends, and all of her enemies were on borrowed time. She then dropped a flyer on my desk and left as quickly as she arrived. Early the next day, I attended my day job, head of the yard, Austin City's only morgue, graveyard, and party room, all in one. And while my co-workers and I were waiting for any business, I decided to put on the show advertised by that flyer. The concept was a nuzlocke, where the host, Hockey, tried to get 50 wins or so with his strikers before he lost a game with each one of them. I'd say it was quite interesting to watch, as the place was basically dead. But soon enough, Hockey lost a match. He was using Luna, a small child who just seemed to love explosives. Yeah, rip Luna indeed. Luna is out. But that's not so sad. Hockey moved on rather fast, but a knock at the door pulled me to my feet. Checking for customers, I opened the front door. There was no one there. Till I looked down. Laying on the ground in front of me is that same small child, unmoving, clearly dead. But hey, job's a job. If a corpse gets delivered to the yard, you put it in the ground. And if it's that corpse's birthday, you give it a slice of cake to go. So I got to work on carving a headstone, digging a grave, and soon enough she was put to rest. Yeah, carving Zero and one might have been a little rude, but I felt like it was appropriate for the coincidence with the stream going on. Finishing up my work, I returned to the staff room to check the television. Hockey just lost another. A uh, boy? Half only or something. Seems like Hockey didn't want to keep the children around. As he moved on, there was another knock, and like before, another body. The same boy that was just crossed out. I worked quickly since business was picking up. Grabbing a quote from the boy's wiki page, I twisted it a little bit. And heading back from the graveyard, Stinnery, one of my fellow co-workers, had a comment. Well, he was known for dying. Regardless, hockey kept losing matches and the bodies kept coming in. It was one after another after another. And another one. At some point, I think I forgot to bury one. Eh, it's what she deserves. I believe all my co-workers agree. Anyway, I had to take a break eventually. And while I was on break, things didn't go so well. Marco Vinch and Orion Corbis got the next body, Drakkar. And neither them nor Scenery were licensed to dig a grave, so they had to make do. They put Drakkar into an empty room the memes channel, and in case anyone checked, they put up an image in front of the body. Clever, but that wasn't the only issue. The group wanted to do some digging to find what exactly was happening to these poor people, but anything that might have had clues, such as medical records, were recently destroyed. And if that wasn't enough, they had to deal with another body, Estelle. Quickly, another plan was hatched. Estelle's body was set down in the lobby. Marco Vinch attempted to make her look as lively as possible. Thankfully, before anyone else could die, I got back to make more graves. A shame about that one. Yeah, I'm not sure about that inscription, but as I was working, more bodies were delivered. Yeah, that's the only image I had to work with. Oh, and... Marco Vinch had a way better idea for an inscription, so I needed to dig her up, and thankfully my good friend Lancon arrived to his shift. While I was working, Lancon was busy covering for us in case anyone arrived, and soon enough, I was done. Anyway, Vice showed up, uh, dead, um, Vice was dead, so I needed to do some digging myself. 
Clearly Hockey was causing all of this, and because of that, he might be onto us. Uh-oh. Clearly, I can't get too out of line, and when another body, X, arrived, I buried him too. But the evidence was starting to pile up against Hockey. After finishing Asher's grave, I needed another break. I had to make a few calls, start a few plans, and thankfully, Lane Condrist recently got licensed for grave digging. In the time it took me to make some arrangements, Lancon had to bury two, Rasmus and Atlas. Now, he didn't follow the style guide, but there wasn't time to remake the headstones, because Haku was down to three strikers. If I was planning to do something, I was running out of time. And as soon as I realized that, Dubu fell. Haku then decided that it was Kai's turn, but something was happening. Kai was fighting back. He managed to win a match, and he then he won another, but that still wasn't enough for Haku. And so there was one striker left, the cheery upstart trying to rise up the ranks of course strike, Juliet. But as the match started, my plan kicked into action. Hockey wasn't playing against random other players, no, Marco Vinch, my fellow co-worker, was one of the enemies. In my last break, I planned with Marco Vinch to hijack Hockey's run. Now, Marco Vinch might just be an amateur core strike player, but Hockey was playing Juliet. And as easy as a hot knife through butter, Mark took control over the match and he put Hockey, not to mention Juliet, out of their misery. Juliet was out, but ending Hockey's little game wasn't all we agreed on. Well, I can tell you for certain that Marco Vinch didn't kidnap and kill Hockey. No, that wouldn't have been right. I can also say that the last time anyone saw Hockey was when he was celebrating the end of his 11-hour Nuzlocke with Marco Vinch, conveniently at the party room at the yard. I can also tell you that I buried Hockey myself, and I consider it important to mention that I believe Hockey got what he deserved. <laughs>